Alright, let's go ahead and solve this real quick. This puzzle should be pretty obvious to you. Use our paint thinner and see what is on this picture, which I believe I already said I think is mist. I don't remember if they change it for. Oh, they do change it for hard mode. No, so I couldn't have raced past that part. Click. ready so this whole hotel especially the room adds to the whole what time period is this effect like is this current time period with VHS's is it set in the 80s or is this a rustic hotel that just kind of has old-fashioned style let's find out what's on the tape do you recognize those windows those are in the uh, They've shown them a couple times with Mary in front of them, and then she starts coughing. Let's watch our tape. Are you guys ready?
apparently I'm not standing in the right place. Are you taping again? Come on. I don't know why, but I just love it here. It's so peaceful. You know what I heard? This whole area used to be a sacred place. I think I can see why. It's too bad we have to leave. Please promise you'll take me again, James. <laughs> Mary. So there you are, James. Did you get the letter? Did you find Mary? If not, let's get going already, okay? She was sick? No. I killed her.
that voice. So, the big reveal. James murdered his wife. Smothered her with a pillow, it would seem. We don't know why. Like, did she ask him to? Did he do it out of mercy? Think back to the uh, flashlight with Mary's clothes on it, on the mannequin. Now I mentioned it was kind of a spotlight on James, saying, look at you. And then as soon as he took that spotlight, all of the sexual monsters started showing up. The original tape also is much, much more graphic than that. They had to censor it for consoles, but uh, on PC, you hear Mary struggling. Well, he does that. And now all of this heavy grief is starting to make a lot more sense as well. I can finally uh, talk about it freely without giving anything away. And it should be noted, my flashlight is totally not working anymore. space again. Got doors leading across the hallway into nowhere.
take a ride on the elevator. Very flooded basement. Gotta stock up. We are at the very end, guys. Angela, no. Thank you for saving me. But I wish you hadn't. Even Mama said it. I deserved what happened. No, Angela, that's wrong. No, don't pity me. I'm not worth it. Or maybe you think you can save me. Will you love me? Take care of me? Heal all my pain? That's what I thought. James. Give me back that knife. No. I... I won't. Saving it for yourself? Me? No, I'd never kill myself. It's hot as hell in here. You see it too. For me, it's always like this. <laughs> I can't 
follow after her. There you have it. I like James' intonation in that scene when she asks for the knife. He says, I would never hurt myself. I wouldn't kill me. Some of these shots are so good. It's such an artistic game. You don't see shots like that, like through the door there, even in newer games. That right there tells you we are at the end of the game. Nine save stacks. Let's do it, guys. Get healed up and uh, see what's behind the door. I was weak. That's why I needed you. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. But that's all over now. I know the truth. Now it's time to end this. So, we have yet another twist. There is not one pyramid head. There is a pyramid heads. And they are basically gigantic demons of guilt, specifically designed to torture James. There are two, I, I believe there's two because he's dealing with both the grief, grief of Mary and Maria dying now. The best method is actually the shotgun, we're just doing this for funsies. And again, they're still invincible, well, they, they take damage like a boss would, but I cannot kill them, and you'll see why shortly. Cutting this one a little close. But isn't it just appropriate to use this giant burden metaphor for his burden to defeat it? 
seems fitting. Double damn it. Yeah, James can't kill them, but what he can do is he can conquer his own grief. The only reason they're invincible is because he wouldn't accept his guilt, which is implied at the beginning of this fight with his little speech. So the very act of resisting them can defeat them. Like I said, I cannot kill them, but uh, I win and you'll see why. He said, alright James. At this point, I've pretty much given my whole take on the game, but what's great about it is that there's so much to unpack in this game and in the story that it's it's really open to interpretation. I encourage you to draw your own conclusions, but I hope I've shown why this game is one of my all-time favorites. The rest of this game shows just what I was referring to before with Mary's voice actress being amazing. It's some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in a video game, period. Mary? What do you want, James? I, uh, I brought you some flowers. Flowers? I don't want any damn flowers. Just go home already. Mary, what are you saying? Look, I'm disgusting. I don't deserve flowers. Between the disease and the drugs, I look like a monster. Well, what are you looking at? Get the hell out of here. Leave me alone already. No use to anyone. I'll be dead soon anyway. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. It'd be easier if they'd just kill me. But I guess the hospital is making a nice profit off me. They want to keep me alive. Are you still here? I told you to go! Are you deaf? Don't come back! James! Wait! Please don't go! Stay with me! Don't leave me alone! I didn't mean what I said. Please, James. Tell me I'll be okay. Tell me. 
tell me I'm not going to die. Help me. I am, uh, I'm just gonna let this play out this last bit and the uh, final cutscene and stop commentating because I want you guys to enjoy the ending. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Mary? <laughs> Wrong again. Mary's dead. You killed her. Maria? Maria, I'm done with you. What do you mean? But I can be yours. I'll be here for you forever, and I'll never yell at you or make you feel bad. That's what you wanted. Now I understand. The problem is, you're not married. No, James. I won't let you. I'll never let you have your Mary back.
Mary? James. <coughs> Forgive me. I told you that I wanted to die, James. I wanted the pain to end. That's why I did it, honey. I just couldn't watch you suffer. <coughs> no. That's not the whole truth. You also said that you didn't want to die. The truth is, part of me hated you for taking away my life. You killed me, and you're suffering for it. It's enough, James. <coughs> Mary? Uh, James! Now I understand the real reason I came to this town. I wonder, what was I afraid of? Without you, Mary, I've got nothing. Now we can be together. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. 
You promised you'd take me there again some day. But you never did. Well, I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you. Waiting for you to come to see me. But you never do. And so I wait, wrapped in my cocoon of pain and loneliness. I know I've done a terrible thing to you. Something you'll never forgive me for. I wish I could change that. But I can't. I feel so pathetic and ugly laying here, waiting for you. Every day I stare up at the cracks in the ceiling, and all I can think about is how unfair it all is. The doctor came today. He told me I could go home for a short stay. It's not that I'm getting better. It's just that this may be my last chance. I think you know what I mean. Even so, I'm glad to be coming home. I've missed you terribly. But I'm afraid, James. I'm afraid you don't really want me to come home. Whenever you come see me, I can tell how hard it is on you. I don't know if you hate me or pity me, or maybe I just disgust you. I'm sorry about that. When I first learned that I was going to die, I just didn't want to accept it. I was so angry all the time, and I struck out at everyone I loved most. Especially you, James. That's why I understand if you do hate me. I want you to know this, James. I'll always love you. Even though our life together had to end like this, I still wouldn't trade it for the world. We had some wonderful years together. <laughs> Well, this letter has gone on too long, so I'll say goodbye. I told the nurse to give this to you after I'm gone. That means that as you read this, I'm already dead. I can't tell you to remember me. But I can't bear for you to forget me. These last few years since I became ill, I am so sorry for what I did to you, did to us. You've given me so much, and I haven't been able to return a single thing. That's why I want you to live for yourself now. Do what's best for you, James. James. You made me happy. <laughs>